Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Justin Michael. And uh, today I'm going to do actually a video on the uh, Tarot de Marseille. I'm going to show my entire collection. I'm going to break it up into two parts. Just in case if you're trying to decide on a deck or, you know, you're just sort of getting into the Tarot de Marseille and you don't really know which one to get. There's so many different options and versions. Um, you know, for me, for a long time, it was just RWS style decks. The Rider Wade Smith and then, of course, all the uh, subsequent uh style decks like in that in that style um because they you know initially when i saw tower de marseille it just seemed a little boring to me you know um there wasn't much going on with the with the pips and i preferred the sexier um you know more enticing fully illustrated pip designs and uh but as you get older you know your taste gets a little more refined uh and you, you know you start to appreciate things that you didn't appreciate before uh, and it was a few years back that I started to get into t t Tarot de Marseille. And I would say this last year and a half, I really got into it. And I started to uh, acquire more decks and um, things like that. So uh, it seems that I built up a, a pretty sizable Tarot de Marseille collection. Um, you know, it's not huge. I mean, it depends on who you're comparing it to. But for me, it's a lot of decks. And um, I don't have a big Rider Waite Smith collection. I actually showed my entire collection last week when I was down the shore and I figured I would do the Marseille uh, this week and I'm going to break it up into two parts uh, this way I can you know take some time and talk about each deck um, and I won't have to rush and of course you won't have to sit through uh, the entire um, process of I don't know how many decks I have but it's, it's a good number uh, so I guess let's get right into it and I'm going to start with uh, the historic decks um, first and foremost so this is the most essential deck, according to you know my opinion. Uh, this is the um, Convair. It's the most common that you'll see, uh, and they all sort of resemble the Convair um, or their slave variations. But uh, this specific version is by Yoav Ben Dove. I've sh talked about this on my channel before, but um, just to be thorough and to, to in full disclosure, I'm going to um, just briefly show you. So this is the box here. Uh, now. Yoav Ben Dov was a, uh, he just passed away a few years ago, and um, he was a PhD, so sort of an academic uh, in the sciences, I believe, like chemistry or physics or something like that. He was a very science-based guy, but he had a very mystical side to him, um, and, um, you know, it was sort of paradoxical, and I remember seeing an interview with him one time, and, um, you know, he was asked that very question, you know, you know, as a science, a person of science, how are you into things that are quote unquote, like woo, you know, what they call woo, <laughs> like, you know, the metaphysical and the, um, you know, non-science based spiritual type beliefs. And he said he came across a book when he was a young person called The Roots of Coincidence by uh, Arthur Kessler. And that sort of changed his view. And there, of course, was a lot of scientific research on like the psychic phenomenon and ESP and uh, it's all very well documented, and, uh, you know, he was a, a big fan, and he was a, a, an enthusiast of the tarot, and he was a student of Joe Dorowski, um, who uh, is, like, you know, the original kind of open reading style guru, um, and, but, you know, when I decided to get a Marseille deck, this was the first I bought, was the CBD, and it's sort of what I stuck to. And I read his book, uh, which was called The Open Reading, and um, it was a very good book, and it got me in, interested in reading Marseille. So, you know, let me show you the cards. Uh, so this is the one I stuck with. Of course, the uh, Joe Dorowski deck would work fine also, you know, because um, it's still a Convair. It's very similar. But um, I'd like to get a copy of that. Uh, I just didn't for the longest time because I figured I had this. Um, but now it's, like, out of print, and... Um, I think the mini's only available, at least as far as I could tell, um, for a reasonable price. But anyway, this is what it looks like. It's very playing card quality, you know. Uh, it has these backs here. Now, these images are free on his website. If you wanted to, you can print them out yourself and, you know, make your own deck. Uh, he, before he passed away, he put all of his images in the public domain. Um, but, of course, you can just buy a deck for, you know, around $20. Uh, and it's just as nice. Um <clears throat> It's uh, standard Nicholas Convair, which was from 1760. And, uh, you know, 
it's a really cool deck of cards very easy to handle very you know kind of narrow and they shuffle really well they're very good for riffle shuffling um, and it's just something that I really like so I figured I would start with this one there's the lovers The Papists. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because uh, otherwise I'll be here all day and I'm already breaking it up into two parts. So and let me show you some pips. These are the pentacles. These pentacles here. So um, I'm not sure if you're, you're aware, probably are, but on the Two of Pentacles in a Marseille deck, 99% of the time it has the name of the artist. Occasionally it won't, but in the historic decks, that's where you can find, you know, the name of the uh, artist. And this says Convert, 1716, of course, says uh, Bendo, this is his version. Uh, it's a really great deck of cards. It's inexpensive. Um, and, um, you know, if it's your first Marseille deck, it's a good deck to kind of start with to see if you like it, you know, and um, I would certainly recommend getting his book as well. Um, so the next up, I guess I'm going to show you um, the Stuart Kaplan um, Tarot Classic. This is a great deck. I don't know per se if this is a historic deck. I know it's based on a historic deck. So, you know, I had to break it up somehow. Some of these aren't going to fit completely in the historic Marseilles. Um, but this was put out by AGM and, and Stuart Kaplan was like sort of the go-to kind of tarot tarot designer in the 70s and 80s uh, and this was one that he, you know you, you'll see his name on the yellow box and things like that but uh, that's this is the package for it and it's now out of print you know it's an older deck vintage but you can get it on eBay for you know around 50 bucks I think I might have paid 60 for mine but I've seen it between anywhere between 40 and 60 um and you know you can be patient and you'll find one but uh this is a really fun colored deck i love it it's a lot of pastel colors um it was colored in with a, like a color pencil you can see you know it's it's really really the colors are just a lot of fun and very pleasant to look at for me i love the pips there's that justice card and it has these uh, checkered backs, <clears throat> which is like, you know, uh, typical of the playing cards of that era. A lot going on with the pips. A couple of court cards for you. Love the devil. The Ace of Wands. There's death. So it's very different. It's unique and um, still kind of historic, like in a way. I know there's some, like, there's obviously uh, a canon that I'm not, like, the most familiar with, but um, as far as historic decks are concerned, um, uh, this is the um, yeah, Fabrique de Cardis a Schaffhaus. It's, like, German, I think. Could be French, I don't know. But... Um, this is one of my favorite Tower of the Marseilles. <clears throat> you know, I really, really love this one. I use it a lot. Um, in fact, I gotta take it easy on this box because I'm starting to really beat it up. I'm gonna have to get a backup copy of this. 
Um, so next up, I guess I'm going to show you uh, another deck I love. This is the Piatnik, and I've showed this on my channel before also. Um, but again, you know, I'm going to show my whole entire collection here. Uh, this was around $14 when I bought it in this store in Washington, D.C. I think it was like a Barnes and Nobles or something. And I saw it sitting there on the table and I was like, wow. And they weren't shrink wrapped, so you can open it up and look at the cards. And when I felt the cards, I was like, that's incredible. These are such adorable cards. Um, it has these really nice blue backs. And it's a very historic, I don't remember the name. I'll show you on the Two of Pentacles if I can find it. Um, but it is a historic deck. Um, and it's in the old style from like the 14, uh, early 1500s. But the card quality is just so nice. I mean, it's so nice to shuffle. And, um, you know, they're water resistant, things like that. So, I'm sure there's the tower. They're almost plastic, you know. You don't have to worry about bending them and so forth. This will last forever, this deck. <clears throat> Strength. There's justice. So I'm just giving you a glimpse of each deck. You know, I'm not going to take too much time showing all the cards. I'd like to find the two of pentacles, though. You know, normally I can find it right away, but today it's just not happening. There's the Hermit, which is, you know, kind of different, you know. I invested this much time already, I might as well find it, right? Ah, well, I can put down in the uh, description box uh, who the designer was. I forget who it was. It's not like a really mainstream um, creator. You know, you might not recognize the name. But um, anyway, uh, I guess let me start with the um, the decks by um, Eves uh, Renault, which is the, um, this is, I believe, the Tarot Heritage. <clears throat> This is the Gasman, okay, and it's from uh, 1840. It's a really nice one. This is like a boutique style Tower de Marseille. It's a, they're a little pricey and they're very, they feel great. The box is incredible. Very luxurious cards. These have really, really nice backs. And these are all historic reproductions. You know, There's a few different companies and I'll show you uh, each of the ones that I have. Um, but uh, Gasman, uh, is this is one of the decks that I really I, I think I saw Mendy from the Artistry of Tarot she had it and I was like wow the, the colors in this is ju are just incredible the blues and the greens it's just really a colorful beautiful deck and I had to have it and I'm so glad I got it there's the papers and the backs are fun and the card quality is incredible it's very luxurious they feel great you know you, you get what you pay for, you know? Now, these are more like collection pieces for me. I will read with them, uh, but I'll just be very careful, you know? But um, they're not like, you know, you're not going to riffle shuffle with these. You're not going to toss these around. Particularly, they have uh, corner edges, you know what I mean? But uh, this is just a beautiful deck. It may not be the, the one you want to get first, but maybe you do, you know? Um, here's the lovers. Chariot. Oh, here's the hanging man. And 
death. There's two pentacles. Of course, it says Geneva and Gasman on here. And then the date. moving I'm very glad I added that to my collection I gotta tell you it's really nice beautiful deck um, and the other one I got from uh, Eves was the um, Francois Harry 1730 there are two Harry versions one is like from a later or earlier date this is the 1730 um, and the difference that I noticed was besides the size of them was um, this was a little smaller they had the um, the uh, Juno and um, Ju Jupiter for the uh, High Priestess and the uh, Hierophant. Um, these are really nice quality as well. And uh, here, these are the backs, and they're very small. There's Temperance. But these are all historic kind of decks, you know. Good for learning about the history of the cards and things like that, you know. I like that these are small, you know. There's the Wheel of Fortune. Magician. Okay, so for the High Priestess, we have the uh, Juno or Junon. J U N O N. Um. And uh, I'll ha I have another deck that's like that too, what I'll point it out when it comes around. The Empress. And I'll show you, here's Jupiter for the, the Hierophant. It's different, you know, it adds a different uh, sort of dynamic to it. The Two of Pentacles, Francois Harry. Very, very cool. So those were both from, I believe, the Tarot Heritage. Uh, I'm not mistaken. I will put it in the um, description box because I could have it mixed up with the one I'm going to show you next. Um, now, the, these next uh, tarots are also historic. Um, and uh, these are actually from um, Jean-Claude Flournoy. So the first thing I want to show you, I have two decks. I have one from Flournoy and one from Joseph Peterson. These are the two um, tarots of Noble, Jean Noble. Um, and they're both roughly the same size, um, you know, maybe slightly. Actually, they're identically the same size. But as you can see, the Flournoy is uh, substantially thicker much thicker um, so the quality is, is a little probably a little thicker in the cardstock um, but it also comes with a book so maybe not I don't know uh, the Joseph Peterson one does not I don't believe I'll have to double check um, but yeah the, the Tarot of John Noble Paris 1650 uh, and again this is Flournoy these are the backs uh, same backs as the um, Peterson version actually uh, this is the infamous uh, magician with the quote-unquote penis finger. Um, in the Peterson deck, they actually have two magicians, but I really love the colors uh, in this version, and they're slightly glossier than the version I'm going to show you in a minute by Peterson. But these are very, very luxurious and nice, high quality. And 
this is the emperor. Tips. Now, well, here's the fool. And so, um, John Noble, Saint Germain, something Saint Germain. Um, so that's the two pentacles. So that's very cool. And now we're gonna look at the Joseph Peterson version. I'm gonna keep these handy for just a second in case I wanna compare them. And um, so yeah, so the Peterson version does not come with a book. And this is the box. You can, I believe I got these on Amazon or eBay. I can't remember, but I he shipped them di directly, Joseph Peterson. I know, I remember the, the return address had his name and address uh, on it. So he probably like, you know, has his business from home. Um, and so this is the oldest Tower de Marseille. This is what he has on here. It arrives in a single deck, only preserved in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, dated 1659, produced in Paris. Uh, Fallberg Saint Germain section by Jean Noble. Okay. It's unusually small and shows many other unique features when compared to latter modernized decks, such as the popular designs of Nicolas Colbert. And that was a hundred years later. So um, again, we you have the same sort of back design, but on um, the Flournoy version, the backs are a little bit darker and, and bigger. But again, the same kind of thing, you know. And um, I'll just show you. So here are the two uh, magicians. <clears throat> So you can see like Flournoy is the, this one here, it's brighter and uh, a little more glossy, whereas the um, Joseph Peterson is matte and it's a little more like pastel colors, you know, but um, both very nice in their own way. And uh, I really like both, so. Uh, now Peterson has another magician somewhere in the deck with a restored, like kind of corrected finger the full I don't really mind I mean I like to have both magicians in here but I mean it, it wouldn't have bothered me uh, you know it's the way the deck was so it's a court card for you king of swords now these are going to be mixed up because I do use this deck the devil So here's the restored version of the magician with the full wand, you know. And of course, I'll try to find the two of pentacles, but oh, here it is. So the same type thing, you know, almost identical. versions uh i couldn't pick one over the other i think that they both have their uh sort of unique uh attributes you know okay and so the other flournoy deck that i have is the uh jean de Dal. and i really like this one it's big it's gigantic it's it's you know a standard size maybe a little bigger than the standard size so here you have you know this is the um the uh, Piatnik, so it's a little bit bigger, a little taller, a little wider. Um, and these are also very luxurious. It's a beautiful box of cards, you know, a box. And 
They were so thick and just nice. Comes with a booklet. They feel great. There's the magician. And I'm gonna show you the backs too. I recently saw a modern take on this deck on the um the um oh my god I'm going blank here uh the Dodal uh, it was um by an artist um an Israeli artist who did like a modern take on it I was thinking about it but it's a majors only uh, I forget the guy's name but uh it's really cool there were only a hundred made is there a Lupes? I thought about getting it because it's really cool, but I think he's going to do a full version of it. These feel great. And I did show you the backs, right? <laughs> Just going to skip around, show you a few different ones. There's the death card. You know, I don't want to be too redundant because they are, they're all very similar, but then they have difference with colors and details, you know. But uh, the thing you get about Marseille is that, you know, what I get about it now that I've eaten it before is the more familiar you become with the cards, the more you notice the little nuances and the, and the differences in detail, and you appreciate them more. It's a little more subtle than, say, you know, an RWS style with a totally different theme. You know, you might have the you know, an Arthurian kind of um, theme in one and, you know, um, something different in another, like, you know, an animal deck or something. But with the Marseille, it's kind of, it's a similar style, but the subtleties are a little different, you know. There's the star. This is a great deck. I'm glad I got this one. And just to show you the historic aspect here, you got Dodal and the Two of Pentacles. <clears throat> A couple of court cards. Okay, so that's the Dodal, Jean-Claude Flournoy. I will leave the um, information um, in the uh, description box, just so <clears throat> I get it right. I don't want to screw anything up. So uh, I'm gonna. I have two more, and then I'm gonna end this, uh, you know, part one. Um, and so I have uh, two different decks by Conrad Stein. Now I'm gonna show these in a later video because uh, I am doing. Um, a video on the CS Tarot and decks by Conrad Stein, but I figured I would show them here uh, just because, you know, I'm showing all my Marseille. So I'm only going to show you a couple of these because I am going to showcase case them in a different uh, video. But, um, let's see here. So <clears throat> this is, um, it's, he has some titled, I didn't even know he did Marseille's. I went to go buy the uh, CS Tarot, the second edition, which, which he just put out. And I saw he had two Marseilles on there, and um, they were both slightly different. Um, this was titled Burnt, B-U-R-N-T. Uh, and this is just like a Colin Vera style, but the colors are very, very different. Um, really cool blue backs, bluish green. And um, I really, really like them. The thing about Conrad Stein's tarot is that, you know, when you look at them... And this goes for the uh, CS Tarot also. Like when you look at them on the computer on makeplayingcards.com, you look at those images. And then when you see them in print on the card, the quality is so much better on the card. So it's like, you know, I ordered these almost out of curiosity, but I didn't expect them to be this nice. And the quality just came out so nice. It's different, you know, it's a different kind of artistic take on, you know, the Nicholas Convert, this specific version. Um, 
So I'm not going to show you all of them. I will show, let's see here. Okay, so yeah, this is Cam 1, 1471. So I'll just show you that. I am going to show these again uh, briefly in, in another video, like I said. So, um, <clears throat> so here is the second deck. Now, this is the Arnold. So from what I understand uh, about the Arnold is that it's the precursor or like sort of the, um, it's loosely related to the um, the uh, Ancien Tarot de Marseille. And I believe they both, like that also came from the, um, well, let me think of the name, but I'm gonna show you. It's such a nice, first off, they have Crackleback similar to the CS Tarot. And then they have these, uh, it's almost like a smoky kind of color and they feel so nice. The, the, the card quality is nice, but the, the way these cards came out was just perfect. Uh, this version here, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the deck that the Ancian is derived from. It um, starts with the B, I believe, the Basican. I believe that's also, uh, it's loosely related to that also. Now, besides the coloration of this deck, it's different from the other deck in that it has uh, a card um, for the High Priestess, a card two, it has, uh, you know, Juno or Junon. And I'll show you the Empress. And then in card five, it has Jupiter. Jupiter. So instead of the Hierophant and the High Priestess, you have uh, Juno and Jupiter. So that's kind of interesting. It's slightly different. Uh, and boy, did this deck turn out really nice. I mean, I, I just love the images. They're really, really nice. The color came out really nice. So good job on that. And as I said, I'm going to be reviewing the um, CS Tarot uh, and a few other decks that I got from him in the next couple of weeks so uh i guess that's it for um the historic so i guess that's the end of uh, part one so uh i guess i'll see you guys in part two of my uh marseille collection thanks for tuning in we'll talk soon